all right people what is going on happy thursday the day after groundhog day this is february 3rd 2022 episode 278 of the first and frame rate show and man oh man i have a lot to talk about don't want to hold you guys over too long for this morning because i want you guys to get on about your day but we have a lot of georgia southern talk on this show i mean a lot it, i mean signing day happened and it was a big signing some really good quality signings a special award was passed out to our ad jared benko and just going to give you guys a recap on this special day because they had a hell southern live i watched it i'm gonna give you my recap on all of that and it is just going to be amazing welcome to the first and frame rate show i am vf baller and over here we talk about georgia southern and georgia southern football um i will tell you this this is one time i can honestly say that i am proud i it is it, it is great to be an eagle and i i say that for you know anybody who is rooted for the team who's been to the school who uh was a student graduated love the school anybody who still have a personal attachment to the school this is a in my opinion a really big day well yesterday was a really big day for georgia southern and i'm going to get into all that not much of the atlanta falcon stuff going on today i know the coaches are still down probably still down in mobile alabama for the uh senior bowl so i will re i will talk about that at a later time but today it's we're going to talk about georgia southern so if this is your first time here hit the like button go ahead and share this uh video or this podcast let people know what i'm doing over here also subscribe to the youtube channel if you're on the podcast side of things you know i need that five star rating that four star rating i need a high rating let people know what i'm doing over here um i recently saw um some feedback on the podcast i'll talk about that before i um get out of here um pretty good feedback i really appreciate it to that person i will give them a shout out later really thank you guys for the support for watching or listening it has just been phenomenal um if you are wondering where you can find this podcast i am on itunes uh, google play uh spotify anchor and i'm on stitcher as well i think i'm still on stitcher i, I need to check that out and find out what's going on with stitcher because sometimes I, I i check it and it just doesn't look uh a part like i want it to but that, you know that's a whole other story for another day Let, let's let's go ahead and get into this signing day is um i uh, was upon us yesterday and we were able to sign uh five well five guys five new eagles were signed but i'm gonna talk about two more that you know that was kind of under the radar that kind of signed uh, a little bit prior to today so i'm gonna give you those guys some shout out too and uh we're gonna talk about these signings i mean this is like a really big deal when you look at the scheme of things um these guys are look like they're phenomenal athletes top of the line uh football players guys who look like they're going to be able to get it done we did have one person transfer from um the university of houston we also had one who decommitted from florida yes the university of florida the florida gators to come to georgia southern so that is uh really pretty much get back because if you guys don't know we had a five-star kicker i think it was uh mata that came to georgia southern and decommitted and went to florida so we're going to take that running back back so we got our running back from florida and he had many uh plenty of offers we're going to talk about that got a couple of guys going to be on the defensive line as well and um we just and we got another defensive back another transfer i think he came from elon or whatever one of our foes in the fcs he decided to come over and play for georgia southern all right so first and foremost before i get into that i want to talk about the first one the defensive tackle from georgia southern uh is is i want to make sure i get his name right um uh i would say l hodge fall yeah i think i said that right l hodge fall from marietta georgia he comes in to the school weighing at a 6'3", 260 pounds. Uh, I, I can't wait to see what the rest of the defensive line look like because um, you, if you listen to the uh, 
if you listen to the Hell Southern Live, this defense, these defensive coordinators are all about guys like this. And I'm going to talk about that later. But he comes in at 6'3", 260 uh, from Osborne High School. Looked at some of his tape. He looked like he's ready to go. Um, but, you know, they're all freshmen, best man up. Whoever's going to play, they're going to play. But I can't wait to see how that plays out. 247sports.com don't have a star rating on him, which is surprising. I think he's a three-star, but for some reason, they don't have him uh, starred. But that's okay. Um, at the 6'3", 260, I'm pretty sure he's going to be ready to go. I can't wait to see what he does on that defensive line. It's just going to be a phenomenal uh, another. You know, it's just going to be a phenomenal time for Georgia Southern right now. Um, the next person that we uh, sign, big guy Latrell Bullard, another defensive tackle from Atworth, Georgia. Man, 6'1", 330 pounds. 6'1", 330 pounds. It says in his bio he's from Atworth, but the hometown here says Smyrna on the on the Georgia Southern Eagles website. Went to North Cobb High School, and man, a guy at 6'1", 330. I, I'm looking at some of his highlights. Unfortunately, I don't have any of his highlights um, on the screen right here. I didn't want to, you know, put too much information out there as far as talking and showing highlights. Like, I want to keep this show between 20 and 30 minutes. So, therefore, if you want to go check any of his highlights, you could go to his Twitter feed. And, man, oh, man, this guy is a monster. And at that size, he's going to be probably getting at the quarterback immediately. Uh, like I like to say sometimes, immediately. Getting at the quarterback ASAP. And, like I said, with the rest of these guys we got on the defensive line, the way this defense is set up and the way things are looking right now, man, this could this team could be a problem. I, I'm going to get into that, but this team could be a problem. Six one three thirty, uh, Latrell Bullard. Um, man, what a pickup right there from North Cobb High School. Um, next person up, we have uh, who is this? Uh, I'll you know I'll get back to that one. I don't want to talk about that one just yet. I want to get used to talk about him in a finale. Um, uh, Mari Wingard. I'm gonna skip over and talk to Mar about Mari Wingard, Georgia Southern uh commit transferred over from elon uh let me tell you about you know don't 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 sleep on any of these guys who played in the fcs or whatever these guys could come over and play ball i mean you you kind of pretty much seen it every team in the Sun Belt at one point was an fcs team and look now the entire programs are a group of five now and they're doing really well the best group of five conference in in college football in my opinion but those guys paved the way them guys who came from fcs on up you got James Madison coming up too as well. So don't sleep on this. This guy looks like he could play pretty well. Um, don't know too much about him. Let me see if I can pull up you know, some information real quick for you guys. And uh, let's talk about him because he has a little bit of, um, you know, he has some college experience. So he played in all 11 games uh, last year. Um, starting um, starting eight of those games, 38 tackles, a tackle for loss, seven pass breakups and two interceptions. Seven of his pass breakups led the team in two interceptions, time for the team honors. So you already know what you're getting here. You, you already know what you're getting here. He posted his best six tackles and on two occasions, um, doing so against Appalachian State and at James Madison. So he's already know how to play against this competition as well. So he had an interception against William and Mary, as well as a win over number twenty-five Rhode Island. I'm pretty, pretty sure that was the FCS team. Yeah, it was the FCS team. Added a season best three pass breakups at Appalachian State a week after recording two pass breakups at Campbell. And Campbell is a good team. We saw them firsthand. So he entered the transfer portal in November and came uh, to Georgia Southern. Um, enrolled at Georgia Southern for the spring semester. So he's officially uh, a Georgia Southern Eagle. So um, very good pickup right there. Uh, Shamari Wingard from Elon coming over to play with us is awesome. Um, the next person I want to talk about is a transfer from the University of Houston, Jeremy Singleton. We'll talk about this guy real quick. Uh, Jeremy Singleton as played at a high level played at houston where you know this team was pretty much uh on the map as one of the top uh teams in the country you know i think that you know they was like top 25 played pretty pretty good got some highlights on his twitter feed you can find out um if you want to check his twitter feed you can see what he does i'm going to look at some of his stats because i thought i had him already jeremy let's see if i can get uh 
some of his stats up here because he has experience as well. Played for the University of Houston Cougars. Uh, I'm waiting for my computer to put, uh, catch up. Okay, so in 2020, he played in four games, including three stars as a wide receiver. Hauled in a season high four receptions at Memphis. So I don't think he played much in the 2021 season, which is okay. So he um he's basically set out of here. I guess he wanted to. Uh, I guess he didn't play, so he's going to transfer over to uh, University of Georgia Southern. So I don't see much on, uh, against him. So there it is. In 2020, he had uh, a couple of receptions against BYU and a couple of catches against Tulane and at number six, Cincinnati. So not much here to show when it comes to his stats. But with that being said, you, you know, you want to have a guy like this. You just want to have a guy like this who has the experience, look like he's going to be able to stretch the field as well. So don't let the stats necessarily fool you. It just seemed like he's um just didn't play last year and he's going to be available for us right away. I can't wait to see what he does. I just can't wait to see what he can do because with this new offense, it's going to be really, really interesting to see what he can do. Now, the last person, I think, yeah, this is the last person that we signed. This is a big deal. Six foot one, 200 pounds out of Winter Park, Florida. Supposed to be going to uh, Florida. Decommitted from Florida back in November. Had offers from LSU. Uh, also, I think he still had Florida from uh, Flor uh, Florida. Let me see. If, oh, not Florida. I mean, Florida State. Let me see. I want to make sure I get this right. Let's see. Uh, I want to make sure. Is it still there? If not, don't. We're not going to worry about it. Had offers from uh a lot of SEC teams. Uh, like I said, LSU, ACC teams, Florida State. I think Ole Miss, um, Miami. He had like almost like thirty something offers, and I'm not kidding when I say that. Uh, and it's it's amazing how he was able as a four star commit to Georgia Southern. Okay, I got it right here. Pulled up finally. Georgia Southern, he ended up signing with Georgia Southern. Let me tell you, let me show you the names that uh, Mr. Terrence Gibbs, four-star running back out of Winter Park, Florida. Let you know the the list of teams that was interested in him. Florida, he decommitted. Florida State, LSU, Alabama, Auburn, Coastal Carolina, FIU, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Louisville, Miami, Michigan, Michigan, I'm sorry, Mississippi State, Nebraska, we're going to be playing them this year, uh, Ohio State, Old Miss, Penn State, Pittsburgh, Old, I mean, Southern Miss, Tennessee, Texas, which Texas was on the, was, was one of the finalists, Texas A&M, UAB, I mean, the list goes on and on. It, it just goes on and on. Virginia Tech, West Virginia, Rutgers, South Carolina. These are all the teams that he was going to uh, possibly commit to, but he chose Georgia Southern. He chose Georgia Southern. Man, that is awesome. That is awesome. That 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 goes to Coach Helton and 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 everybody on that team, his staff, uh, the running backs, Coach Merritt. Uh, I mean, it, it's just amazing how we was able to get him from all these other teams. I you know I guess it was just a thing where. It just felt like home. A lot of these kids who signed, like the Ashton Whitners, and and um, when you look at Cal Van Trees, who were on, who was on the uh, Hell Southern Live, they said like, look, they took a trip down here to Georgia Southern, and it felt like home. It felt like a college town. They loved what they saw. They loved the atmosphere. And Georgia Southern, you know, Statesboro is a phenomenal, phenomenal small, pretty little city. I mean, a lot of people like to call it God's country. A lot of people love to call it, you know, one of the prettiest little campuses in the country, in the, in the country with the prettiest little stadium in the country. And, you know, I agree. It is. I mean, I, I attended Georgia Southern. I um, was uh, on campus at one point and it was a, a beautiful thing. It really was a beautiful thing to be there. And um, I, I, I totally get it. So this is the big, the big story right here. Terrence Gibbs decommitting from florida a while back going he visited lsu he visited florida state he uh, uh was uh, he visited uh, florida committed decommitted you know and all these other teams had offers all these other teams had offers and he decided to come to georgia southern it was just, it's just it's just awesome just awesome to see him come to georgia southern and i, I can't wait to see what actually happens with that whole running back situation because we got a lot of good running backs a lot of good running backs 
And, you know, so it's going to be really cool to see. Now, without, you know, before I get into the recap, we want to look at uh, a couple of other recruits that we did get. We did sign Ben Anderson, number four long snapper in the country. You see him up there in the top corner, number 44. It's good to have another long snapper to go along with uh, a, a pretty good punter that we got with um, Beck. So with Beck and him, this is going to be a pretty good chemistry, hopefully, how that plays out. And uh, we also did get another running back, um, Robert Edwards. Uh, I think Robert Edwards the third. We end up getting another running back. So that's number five right here on the screen. If you guys are not listening on the po- watching on the listening on the podcast, if you're listening on the podcast, that's uh, the ones you said. Robert Edwards the third. He committed as well. Six foot, two hundred pound running back. Um, out of I think he's also out of Georgia as well. So that is pretty cool when you look at the scheme of things it is just awesome when you just see what is going on at georgia southern the way things are moving right now it's a beautiful thing it, it really is it is really awesome to see with all these great root these these great guys young men coming in starting to establish themselves and make a name for themselves it's really beautiful to see them guys want to be a part of something special part of a you could say a rebuild and they're sitting here actually able to uh commit and build something special because last year you know it was a down year but guys like you know jared benko coming in you also see look coach clay helton all the other guys that are staff members what dave was able to do to bring these guys in and do something really special it's just quite awesome so um it, it's just it's just great it's just great to see so uh we're going to get into the hell southern live recap i'm going to recap based on what i from what i've seen um i highly recommend you to watch it because when they said it was a special um a special show it really was it was a really good show um the show basically basically started off with clay helton talking and having him out there to see uh let you guys know that um how everything played out for um you know signing day the guys that they bought in or whatever the case may be and then they flipped it over to a couple of players kyle van trees the quarterback that's um was that transferred from buffalo to georgia southern he talked about what he loved about georgia southern why he's here and um why he decided to come to this school and 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 continue to build off of what we already had he talked about the bowl wins and the fact that it you know that's not easy he wanted to be a part of that winning another bowl for the georgia southern eagles also they jumped over and, and ashton whitner came in my favorite recruit my favorite prospect of the 2021-2022 class uh this kid i think I, I i truly you you know there are certain people that you see and i think that this kid is going to be special he's going to be very special when it comes to this uh team four years down the road if he stays off four years it's going to be something very very special and with that being said i just sat there and listened to him he didn't he was he, he's a kid a few words but he got his point across on based on what he wanted to uh based on what he wanted to say and how he answered the questions and he just wanted to absorb you know any information that was given to him based on the questions that was asked so he's a guy that you can tell he pays attention to detail and as a safety that's something that you would want so i'm really i'm very high on ashton whitner and there's no bones about it you can see on my twitter i talk about him all the time when um when uh, when there's anytime there's a uh, a chance to talk about him i definitely talk about him it is something that is it's something to behold it's something really good to see when you have a young guy like that that is well beyond his years when it comes to just you know just paying attention to things it's really awesome to see next we got into the coordinators and the coordinators um you know that was really cool brian ellis i think he came out first and got to listen to him and one thing I noticed about Brian Ellis, Brian Ellis is from the, the state of Georgia. I think I, I think a lot of these guys are from this area, and that's what makes it real special for all of these guys. Brian Ellis is from the state of Georgia. He talked, and he had the other guys come in, the support staffs, the guys who came in. The wide receiver coach came in, and he talked to Marcus Davis, and he sounded like he's ready to go. I like the energy from Marcus Davis. It was pretty cool to see. Um, really, you know, Brian Ellis gave off some good energy too, but when Marcus Davis – got the you know got the mic it's like yo he's ready to go he want to get these wide receivers out there and ready it's like these guys are ready for the season now 
you know what I mean? So, you know, that was kind of cool. I think he, um, you know, Matt Merritt had got the talk as well, uh, the running backs coach, and, you know, kudos to him. I can't wait to see what he does with these running backs. Uh, also, um, I think who else, who else talked on the offensive side? I think Ryan Applin was able to talk as well, so how that's going to play out. Um, one thing that he did say, he doesn't know how the play call is going to go. So with that being said, the play calling is going to be pretty much up to Coach Helton. And that, that makes sense at the end of the day. You just don't know how that's going to go. So with that being said, it's just that's just another thing that we just going to have to find out once spring practice and spring the spring game is going to be. Which spring game is going to be April twenty third, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm got I got to find a way to get there. Um, out and once that out once the offensive side came, the defensive uh the defensive coordinator came in. So Will Harris came in, and you know he talked about what he wanted to do, and he realized. One thing he realized, I don't think Will Harris is necessarily from here, unlike all the other guys that I was talking about. Like, um, when I talked about Brian Ellis, he's from here. I think, you know, Marcus Davis is from this area. And um, uh, let me look. Uh, let me look. Me. I know you know. Let me see. Let me see. Sorry about that. I'm all over the place. Brian Applin, I don't think he's necessarily from here, the state of Georgia, but he's from this area. So, um yeah, so that, that that works out. So a lot of guys from the southeast. So when I get back to Will Harris, like I said, Will Harris, I don't think he's necessarily from this area, but he's learned about this area. So once he got here, he said he realized, like, wait a minute, there's something going on here in the state of Georgia. Like he said he hit like 20 or 25, uh, he hit like 20 or 25 counties, and he walked in there with the Georgia Southern uh, uh, on his chest with the, with the, with the apparel on, and it was either somebody knew somebody from Georgia Southern or they had a lump from Georgia Southern or their family was it's like he it was like really impressed how not only that much football is cherished here, but how Georgia Southern football is intertwined in all of the counties that he went to. So that was pretty cool. And he got to tell he got to let people hear from the people that are under him or the people that is that's with him on the defensive side of the ball. Coach Whitley, you already know about him. No, there's not much to be said about him. You already know how he does with the cornerback. So we're just going to keep that there. If you've been following Georgia Southern, you know that list. I done went down that that route plenty of times. Um, oh, I'll, I'll get back to that. I'm sorry. I just saw something else. Um, one thing I say, um, Rip Rowan, he was able to talk. And that's another person. Just like I said with Ashton Whitner, you see, like, something about them, like, like Rip Rowan just he just has this thing about him to like he's gonna be more than just a defensive line coach. I don't know if that's his aspirations. I don't know what's going on with that. But it to me, I it just something about him just oozes head coach. Like one day he can he's gonna be a head coach somewhere. And I love his energy. His energy was just awesome and his attitude is infectious. It was pretty awesome to see. Um also um, Aaron Swans, I think he said something. I think he was able, they pulled him up to talk as well. I can't remember, but you have Aaron Swans, the linebackers coach. All those guys, I think they came from uh, Washington. So he brought pretty much the whole Washington defense with him. And the guys that they just, uh, the guys that they just recruited, I mean, man. And the, and the guys that we already have, just, just crazy. You know what I mean? So with that being said, also, I forgot. Now, I, I, I do want to apologize. On the offensive side, when Brian Ellis was talking, Richard Owens did come up and speak as well. Offensive line, run game coordinator. And um, he had this line. I couldn't catch the catch. The, I only caught the end of it. He said something about whatever's like 600 pounds and move them. So he wanted these offensive linemen to move guys out the way. So um, I didn't catch it, but you have to go back and listen to the Hell Southern Live to catch it. But um, it, it caught everybody by surprise. Like, hey, I like that line. And I never went back to listen to it because I think I had my son with me when I was watching. And I never went back to, you know, to listen to it. But one thing I will say, um, Coach Helton did come back and talk, and then you talked to Turner West. And Turner West, he's a special teams coordinator, and he was very excited about a Ben Anderson coming and having, um, you know, Beck as the punter. You know, he was really big on that. And, you know, you got a couple of kickers with Brenton and you have Rayner. So he was really excited to try to get those guys, you know, to the next level when it comes to being successful on special teams. So, uh, and at the end of the day, when we really looked at this whole situation, this entire staff is really good. This is a really good staff. I mean, they, they, you know, we were ranked number six out of all the college football is the best new staff in the country. And, and, you know, the top group of five, 
we're number six up against the other FBS, you know, power five teams. So this looks really, really good. I mean, really good. Um, also, Jared Benko came in and talked, and he won the 2022 Irk Russell Spirit Award. Personally, I feel that it could not have been given to a better guy. Everything he's done this season with all the turmoil that happened in the beginning of the season – and how he's able to turn things around, even though we didn't win our games, but this program is still standing. You know, we do we did have a couple of transfers. I mean, like Dexter Carter, he's another one that's going to be transferring. Unfortunately, I do get it, I do understand it, but um, that to, to have the the little transfers that we had and him to keep this team together, him as well as C Coach Clay Hilton, keep this team together during the downtime, and not only that, to be able to sign these top I ain't going to say top recruits but these high quality recruits I mean man and and you know get some really good transfers over here I mean the, it, you know you cannot ask for a better situation and Jared Banko definitely uh deserved that award you know Eric Russell Spirit Award um from the Georgia Sports uh Hall of Fame I still feel that Eric Russell should be in the College Football Hall of Fame but that's definitely another story for another day. Don't want to get into that. But, um, yeah, this was a really great day to be an Eagle. Really great day. Hell Southern Live, the episode, was pretty much one of my favorite ones. I try to catch as many as I can and um, uh, when they are live. And this one, I really enjoyed watching this and listening to it. Um, it, just, it just put a bow on top of the day. That was just really a really good day for Georgia. There not many recruits that were signed. We got a lot of people that were signed, but the ones that were signed were very high quality players, and they, they they possibly they could contribute day one. And you know, at the end of the day, that's that's not a bad thing. Now, there's already rumblings that there's a possibility that we have openings for six more, six more, uh, re openings for uh, six more recruits. I mean, man, I mean, what else can we do? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, six more. That is awesome. So with all this going on, it's possible that we can get six more players, <laughs> you know, on this team. And another thing I want to talk about is that Coach Helton did say that that Georgia, that Eagle Storm that went across the entire, the entire state of Georgia, all 159 uh, counties, it wasn't just for recruits for 2022. He said, there's, you know, they, they was talking about 2023, 2024. So we, we might have something really special going on here. I cannot wait to spring practice. I cannot wait for spring, the spring game on April 23rd. I am already trying to get there. I'm already trying to get there for April 23rd for the spring game. Hopefully, we need to pack that stadium. We need to let these guys know that we appreciate the moves that they're making. We need to let these guys know that, you know, the power of Paulson, and we we need to let them, we need to show them the power of Paulson on the spring game and let these guys know that they have our support because what they're doing here is nothing short of amazing. What they're doing here is nothing short of what, um, nothing short of greatness. This is legendary stuff. This is stuff that is, that builds and, and and this is the type of stuff that you build your legacy off of. Not only just for Coach Hilton, but everybody else that's around him, the whole staff, Jared Benko. I mean, he's really trying to do something really special here at George Southern, and this is it's not nothing to sneeze at. This is a really big deal, and I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. I'm happy to make this content for you guys, and hopefully, you know, you guys enjoyed the rest of this show. Uh, because it's time for me to check out of here. It's been, you know, I think that's going to be a good closing of the show. If you like this content, hit the like button. If you're on YouTube, share this video, hit the subscribe button. If you're on the podcast side, give me a five-star rating. Also, if you don't mind, leave a comment. Leave a comment, if you don't mind, on the uh, podcast side of things, whether it be iTunes, Google, uh uh, anchor spotify or whatever the case may be if you guys don't mind doing that that'd be awesome 
Uh, let's see if I can pull this up. All right, I got a recent five star rating. Thank you for this. I cannot pronounce your name is all over the place. <laughs> it is like a bunch of numbers and letters, but I really appreciate the po- the feedback. It's a great podcast, great insight and discussion about Atlanta Falcons and Georgia Southern football and more. Hell Southern and subscribe to the podcast. So I appreciate that for the person who that's my first um review and feedback i really appreciate that other guys gave me a five star rating out of five i really appreciate that as well but i love the feedback and i would like to hear more so if you guys don't mind that'd be cool if not you know that's cool either way long as you're listening i really really appreciate it so that's gonna be pretty much for me thank you guys once again for listening and i hope you guys enjoyed this episode i will see you guys on the next one you guys be easy you guys be blessed peace